Hey guys, APAF5 here, and sorry for not posting a video last week. I've been sick and busy with senior stuff, and it's just been a huge mess. And today I can't really record because I still have a cough, and I'm tired from all this crazy stuff going on this weekend. I went to SeaWorld, and then we had a concert the next night, and the two nights I was at SeaWorld, I barely could fall asleep because it was on like one of those pull-out couches and you know everyone's loud in the hallways and anyways it wasn't um good relaxing wise it was i did have a really fun weekend though anyways on the other hand of things since i can't really record a gaming video that i would feel good about putting out there i thought it would just be fun to talk about some random things i collect now I think I'm going to title this video The Hipster Within Me, which I'm going to say right now I really hate being compared or called a hipster because I don't consider myself a hipster, I don't dress like a hipster, um, I'm usually not on the same political spectrum as a hipster, if there's even a political spectrum for them. Hipsters are kind of weird. However, I'm super conservative and I collect a lot of things that nowadays wouldn't be considered mainstream, even though a lot of people say the conservative side of things is mainstream, even though now being a hipster is kind of mainstream. So basically, we'll just say being a hipster is too mainstream for me. Anyways, I think I've rambled on about that enough. I just wanted to show you some of the sort of traditional things or just sort of old things that I collect that the average person probably wouldn't have in their household. Now starting off, you can see right here I have my Sega Master System that my parents got me for Christmas. I was going to buy one, but while I was thinking about buying one, my I told my parents I wanted one and Christmas was coming up and they got me one of these. Now before I even got this for Christmas, I actually bought a video game for it on eBay because it was a good price and I couldn't find one in good condition anywhere for this price. I got Fantasy Star. Now, I always misspell Final Fantasy because of this title, which is frustrating, but Fantasy Star's... There goes a the game onto the floor. Um, Fantasy Star is an adventure role-playing game. It's a turn-based role-playing game, and this is in uh, Sega's 8-bit console that was sort of competition for the NES, but the NES blew it away. I think the NES came out first, too. And the reason I got this is because I got Fantasy Star 4 and the Sega Genesis, and I thought it would be cool to, you know, have the first one on the Master System. I knew I was going to get a Master System eventually, but I needed this game and I saw it on eBay. Ignoring my long fingernails, you will see that in this one there's actually like first person places in the game, which was pretty cool because I don't even think there was any first person perspective based things in Fantasy Star 4, which sort of surprised me. I'll look at the game. It's just, it sort of looks like a cassette tape to me. I don't really know what they were going for with the design. And they have this grid sort of on all their games. If you look at these games over here, it always sort of had the same sort of design, so the Sega Master System game packaging did stick out. This, this I believe, is sort of like um, Zelda, the original Zelda, the um, above perspective one. Yeah, I can't figure out how to really progress too far in this. I think I made it to like the second boss level area. I really don't understand it too much. That's password save feature. I believe I took a picture of the password I needed. But that that was a, this is a fun game to just play around with. And then Wonder Boy and Monster Land, not World. Um, this is a 2D sort of. Sorry about that there. Um, a 2D the action, I believe it's sort of like an RPG, but I can't remember if there's any action, eh, any RPG elements in it. But it's really fun to play, and the reason I got this was because I thought it looked like the most stereotypical 8-bit game ever. Then I played this on the channel before OutRun, I played a bit of this in my snail race challenge video thing. So the reason I'm saying this is part of the hipster side of me is just because hipsters for some reason really like retro games and this is sort of like one of those old things I collect that I'm not sure if tons of people collect Master System games. Like in the general scheme of things, I'm sure there's like a couple million out there. 
But out of the 7 billion people on Earth, I'm one of the people who collect Master System games. Now most of these things you'll... Eh, kick the camera. Now most of these things you'll see that I collect because they're old, or oldish. I always like using the word oldish because they're not really old, but they're not up to date either. I really like traditional sort of analog and um, cartridge based and just all the original stuff, I guess. So that's how I usually get into collecting a lot of these things that hipsters would probably enjoy collecting too. However, this I purely collected just because I really like this game and this game is very um, underrated and I just wanted to collect everything involved with this game. Now, you might know that I really like Klonoa, and I managed to collect the two, I don't even know what they're called, I believe in Japanese they're called manga, but I'm not sure if that refers to the whole series or the book or whatnot, but in, the only thing in English in here it says comics, so for the sake of not sounding stupid, I'm just going to call them comic books, and I managed to get the two thingies, they made two books, and um, I don't even un want to unwrap that, but I bought these purely for collector reasons, because I don't even speak Japanese, so I have no idea what's going on here. He's, they're running from something, and yeah, that's, that's just the thing that I collected, because I want to collect everything related to Klonoa. Maybe I'll actually end up calling this video hipster things that I collect. Would that even make any sense? Anyways, uh, I'm saying anyways a lot, I think. One of the things that I collect that I know hipsters collect, but I collect because I'm very analog based, I like collecting the analog alternative to everything, is records. Now I do have some records of like classic rock bands like Boston and ACDC and stuff. However, I also like Christian punk and Christian metal, which is very, we'll just say, off the spectrum of pop music. So here are a few vinyl records that I found of the few bands that I like from modernish times. Now, to start this off, actually, this is a newer band. False, bleh, False Idol. Now, I've talked about these guys before, and I managed to get one of their... I'm not even sure if this would be, bleh, be considered a 45 or a 70... whatever. Man, I really suck at terms. Um... I think this runs like on the same time whatever as a normal record, however it's in the size of a 45. That made no sense, but anyways, if you notice 4 out of 500, and I bought this like 2 or 3 years after the record was released, so they didn't, they sadly didn't sell that many, however you might still be able to find them on, are they sold on Humper Punk Records or on Someone else. Anyways, look look up False Idol and you'll probably end up finding this if it's still around. Now, the first thing you'll notice, this is red. That's really cool. This was the first colored record I got. However, one thing I do have to mention is that I believe these were made by Veritas Vinyl. And their records, or at least this False Idol record, are very, um, like, they're definitely not heavy. They're very light and they're very, um, they just feel like they were... I don't know, they're not, they just feel like they were cut out of a piece of plastic somewhere. But they work, and it still looks really cool, so, yeah, that's really cool. Especially since it's a punk rock band that I listen to, and I got vinyl for it. Sorry if I keep having to cut around, I keep having to, like, sniffle every ten seconds. What's really weird is, with that vinyl record, I got this. And it was, like, were these things from... Can't remember if this was from Veritas Vinyl or from Thumperpunk Records, uh, or th how they're connected in that way. But anyways, this like sort this came with the record, and it really confused me because I believe I got the record for like five dollars, so I'm really confused on why they would give me another free thing. But this is like sort of like an advertisement, I believe, for all these different bands, which I've heard of most of these bands since I follow Veritas Vinyl and. Thumberpunk records, but um, it's just like one song or two songs, I believe, from every band. And this record is blue. And what's weird is this is heavier than the other one. And this was a, a freebie. Yeah, Veritas Vinyl, okay. 
I'm not sure how they're connected to Thumper Punk Records, but I know they they seem to work together in some things. I'm confused, but anyways, yeah, that's a blue blue record of a bunch of Christian punk music. I think I only liked like a few of the songs that were on here, but this is a really cool way of finding music that um, you other eyes would have never listened to. <coughs> Dying. By the way, I have no idea why I said 70-something. I believe that was a really old version of a record. Nowadays, everything's 45 and 33. I just had to go look at that. Now, I showed this off before. This was the first vinyl I got of a band that I, you know, actually listened to that's from the 21st century. Demon Hunter. That's a really crazy picture. And my grandma, like, thought I was listening to demon music, and then I had to explain it was a Christian band, and she was like, what? Anyways, um, hit the camera again. Demon Hunter. Um, there we go. There's a picture of them. I showed this before in, like, a... I don't even know what kind of video it was. Um, but this is, like, the, the best packaging I've sort of gotten with a record so far. It, you know, opens up sideways. I think I had a Queen album that opened like that, but again, that's a older record, and I'm showing off the really rare... Or not rare, but really weird stuff I collect. Um, this is just another thing that lists off all the songs and lyrics on that record. This one isn't a fancy color, but it's like that really heavy vinyl that everything seems to come out on nowadays. Thing to slide out of the thing. I'm making so much correct grammar. I'm, that wasn't even correct grammar. What am I talking about? Why am I doing this while I'm sick? Anyways. Here's what the record looks like. It's shiny black vinyl. This is what everyone's used to. This one's actually full size, thank God. Um, did they have to give me... I believe they gave give you, you know, two records in here for the full album. These, they only can fit like two to four songs on one side of a record, I believe. Let's carefully put this back in here. If you can't tell, I like being very careful with things, but I also can't seem to be careful and timely at the same time, and I also can't seem to talk in English today. Then I went to a record store with my dad, and while my dad was, you know, looking for like Pink Floyd albums and stuff, I was looking for punk rock albums, and I managed to find this old MXPX EP that doesn't even want to fit into the frame. It's just in a bright, orangish, red... I, what would this be called? A cover? Because I believe this is like a sleeve? Or is this a sleeve? And this is like a sock or something. I don't know. Terminology. Um, has like five songs on How many are on here? I don't know. They're not numbered. And they don't have capitalization. So I have no idea how many songs are on here. Probably like five or six. Nine? Well, that wouldn't be an EP that... Well, you have to have at least 10 songs on an album to be considered a full-length album. I don't know. Let's just carefully do this around a tripod and show you guys... Yes, black vinyl. Cool. These guys are sort of like a um, skate punk band from the 90s, you know, the... The classic 90s punk sound, I guess, is what I would consider it. Then I have this... I'm not even sure if it would be... Is it like a collector's thing? Because I'm not sure if they did vinyl back when this came out. And it had like a copyright date from like 2000 or something. So this wasn't originally what the album was put on. But anyways, Minor Threat was a straight edge ba band back in the day. And this is just a, a Minor Threat album. Should I pull this all the way out here? It's black vinyl, like everything else. And this one doesn't fold open or have anything fancy. However, it does have this thing on it. Um, with the band on the back and stuff. That's it. The newest vinyl I got was at a Disciple, Children 18.3, Seventh Day Slumber, Decipher Down, Spoken, Concert, Rock, Tour, Thing. Um, I managed to find one of Disciples Attack vinyls, which is awesome, because I really wanted this back when they were kickstarting 
their album. However, they only were like allowing a hundred people to get the vinyl. So the vinyls were already like sold out by the time I backed the project. It was before the project was even finished or whatever, you know, when the, the date goes over. So I still managed to buy a CD or back them enough money to get a CD. And I got a CD like a week early. However, the the shipping took like a week, so I got it at the same time everyone else did. Anyways, um, but here's the vinyl I finally managed to get. Now this is the coolest vinyl out of these. I, I just expected, okay, it's a Disciple vinyl, that's really cool. But then when I got home and opened it up, this is the coolest thing ever. And it has, you know, all the, the lyrics and the thanks on the back from each of the band members. Yes, you see, it is orange. However, it's even cooler than that. It's orange with, like, those swirls in it that's, like, on a bowling ball. I don't even know what that, or how they managed to do that. But it looks so cool. And it's not, it doesn't feel like the, the light um, vinyl that Veritas Vinyl uses on some of their records. I don't understand what, what that is. But anyways... Um, this, this feels like as heavy as all those other vinyls are, however, it's like this really cool orange and dark orange and yellow and oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, I haven't actually listened to this yet though, but it looks awesome. I've, I've heard the album before because I bought the CDs. So now that I got that back in there, that is a lot of this, the, uh, I'm not even sure what I'm going to call this video, okay? This is just a video I needed up by Monday. And I thought it would be finally, it would be cool to finally show you guys some of this random stuff that I've been collecting that isn't all video games. Now here's the last thing I wanted to show you. This was a case my mom gave me to uh, put all this stuff in. But I collect fountain pens now. I don't have that much ink for them. I just have Schaefer Black and Schaefer Green, which Schaefer Green is... An amazing ink because it looks turquoise. Um, I might end up buying Schaefer turquoise one day, but the reason I have those Schaefer inks is because I know it's trustworthy ink, but it's only ten dollars instead of like fifteen to thirty dollars like all the other inks. Anyways, I just wanted to show you some of the fountain pens I've I've gotten. I've only been into fountain pens for like three months, so I don't have tons of fountain pens or anything. Plus, with all my other hobbies, I can't really buy tons of expensive fountain pens, but here we go. I, I'll, I'll open it up the other way so you don't see all of them at once. That doesn't really work, so I'll just hold it open. Now, I have two pens from this brand. Hang on. I have two pens from this brand called Jin Hao. Jin Hao is this Chinese brand that, with Chinese craziness, managed to make these pens for, like, under $5. Uh, well, the MSRP is, like, $15 or something, but on Amazon you can get like one of these for $3 with free shipping. I don't know how they manage that. But this is the um, Jin Hao X450, I think. We'll see on the back. Yes, yes it is. And the difference between these, besides, they, they all come in different colors. So like this is the X750, and you can get this in a bunch of different colors. But they only have a few minor differences. This, however, overlaps more, and this seems like it's just a, a band, if you notice, like, I don't even know. This this seems like it's overlapping, but it's smooth on the top bit, and this sort of just seems like a band on each side. When you pop it off, it pops off there, though. Anyways, but the clips are clippy. I don't even know why I brought that up. But on this pen, this was the pen I first got. Now, if you buy these on Amazon for $3, they're not uh, super trustworthy. I bought him one, and it didn't arrive. Um, that was the most recent one I bought. And then I bought... This was the first fountain pen I bought, and um, it's, it's awesome. However, I bought an X250, and this is what arrived, an X750. I'm glad I got the X750 because it's even cooler. However, that wasn't what I ordered. And then when I, I bought... This one, oh, what was the shipping problem with this one? I had a shipping problem with this one too. They Every every time I bought in a fountain pen that's Jin Hao, I've had like minor problems. 
that didn't really hinder the writing ability, but it was like, I, I'm not sure if I would trust buying them on Amazon. That's one good thing about buying pens from like the Goulet Pen Company is that even though it's more expensive, you're giving money to a really good company and you're going to be more secure with what you're getting instead of buying it directly from China. Anyways, this one, if you notice the section, which is what this bit is called, actually has like groove marks in it. And this like forces my hand to hold it like this, which is good because I learned to write with pens like this, which is good when you're writing with the ballpoint because you're like really pushing down on it. However, with these, you're supposed to kind of write lighter with them. And when you hold it like this, it's like at a 90 degree angle and you're supposed to write with them like at a 45 degree angle. So this sort of is reteaching me how to write right now. Both these pens came with ink converters, which is basically, well, don't open it like that. Um, I opened it backwards for some reason. Um, this thing, which allows you to put ink in it, you like twiddle this knob over here and it sucks up ink or you can push back out ink. And basically what this is doing is it's replacing ink cartridges that you can put in here. Like this is the converter. Um, but what you could do is just buy cartridges, which you would just put in there instead of buying bottled ink and using a converter. Um, so basically this thing could just be a cartridge that's pre-filled with ink, but I like using bottled ink because then you can have tons of different colors instead of just whatever, um, whatever you can find that is already in a cartridge. Somehow I managed to get ink on this finger. Hopefully that was always there. Otherwise, one of these pens. Oh wait, this pen's already inked up. Yeah, never mind. The next pen I bought was this Pilot Metropolitan, which is sort of like a another beginner pen. It's a twelve dollar pen, and it it writes really nice. The problem is this stupid ridge here, which sorry about my fingernails again, um, is really like abrupt. So if you hold it here, you're screwed, and if you want to hold it up here, the section's really skinny, and if you hold it like I do, you just are screwed because I, I don't even know, this seems wobbly, and then when I hold it like this, this is confusing, and then uh, what I was doing was holding it sideways, but then my finger like gets stopped there, so it writes super smooth, however, it's that that design there was a stupid design choice um so comfortable to hold not as good as the Jin Hao's, but really good writer um what i didn't get to mention is uh i i collect fountain pens because again i like the most analog thing ever and also they're pretty smooth and really cool because a lot of ballpoints don't have all these cool neat designs and all this ranging and quality and stuff Plus, you can't use bottled ink. That's why I really like fountain pens. I can use bottled ink. Now, after I said that, and I'm losing my voice now, um, this is a... I, I've never been able to pronounce this pen brand. Hang on, let me get my voice back. I'm alive. Okay. Um, this is what they call a rollerball pen. Um, some people call them gel roller pens because they use a gel ink. However, if you're not into buying ink cartridges or finding really fancy ink that isn't water-based to work in this pen, you can buy this converter and you can actually fill this with fountain pen ink. So I can buy eh, I can buy fountain pen ink um, in the bottle and fill it into here and write almost as if it's a ballpoint, um, but it's not. It's a rollerball. However, since it's a rollerball and I'm using it with water-based ink, it's very scratchy and sometimes it. It stops when I try to write an A, so the A looks like a U, like a lowercase a, you know, because, um, I don't know, it's not good at writing circles or something. Uh, but this this is what I was journaling in, because it's smoother than a ballpoint, or not, it feels scratchy, but it writes easier than a ballpoint, but it's a rollerball, so I don't have to worry about the position I'm holding it in. So this was a cool pen for just jotting down notes randomly. However, the annoying thing with the A's was getting out of hand. Now, the next pen I got was for Christmas. And this is against everything that I've been doing right now. 
and it is a, what was it called? Something space pen. Oh, I forget the brand name, but this is a space pen which is like $20. This is the most expensive pen and it's the least smooth pen. But it's basically super small and then when you do this, when you post it, same thing with that other pen I took out, I forgot to post it, but it turns into an all right length pen. I mean, I have smallish hands, medium sized hands, I guess I would say, with, the, I need to trim my fingernails. Um, haven't said that enough already, but uh, it's it's just a ballpoint. The, the cool thing though is, since this is a known brand, I can buy more cartridges with, that have built in ballpoints. However, the reason these are called space pens is because they're pressurized and that pressurizedness um, basically means they're more reliable. You can write them at like any angle and you can just buy these inserts for slightly cheaper than the pen. I'm not sure if I'll ever get this to focus though. Oh, wow. Black refill. Um, Fisher space pens, that was the name. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's on here though. Oh yeah, it is. Six dollars to Fisher Space Pen. That's how you get a refill. Um, but that that's pretty cool. Um, that it's like pressurized, so you don't. Hang on, I need to figure this out. It's so small, I can't figure out which end is which. And I'm doing this through a viewfinder. But it's pressurized, so you can write at any angle, which you can really do with any pen. Um, but it's just more reliable, and I guess. If I ever become an astronaut, I'll be taking this to space with me. And I sort of bought this also just for notes and to carry around. So that's this side of the box. This was a jewelry box my mom gave me. So it has a mirror in it. And this was a really crappy nib I got on a Jin Hao. Um, it was, wasn't one of the Jin Hao's um, Goulet pens carry. It was like the 15200 or whatever. And it had like a wooden barrel. However, it never wrote well, and I managed to completely destroy. It. Actually, I can show you. This nib was too like squashed, so it wrote really dry, and I couldn't get it to write well. So I managed to buy another nib for it, and I'll show you here. This was the pen, the pen in question, which looks really cool, and I love having real wood as like the barrel. I think that's awesome. And this has Jin Hao's logo on it, and it's a really cool pen. And then I bought this um, two-tone nib. What the heck is that? Is that water? How in the world did that happen? Um, I'm having so many issues. This is a Knox nib, and it's a medium, and it wrote, like, really, really broad. Um, so it went from writing really dry to really wet, basically. And um, I managed to completely destroy it because the top part... Did I do it again? No. This part unscrewed when I tried to unscrew it and I didn't notice that and I managed to completely destroy the end of the converter. However, I never got this to write too well. And then this manages, just by normal writing, this manages to move out of alignment with the feed. Or not, yeah, the feed. Um, so basically, this is not a really good pen. It will write, kind of. However, I had so many ink problems with this, and just by capping and uncapping it, it like, and you see, I, I uncap and cap like this. I don't like wrench it off, but when I did that, it still managed to get ink on the nib and on the section, so every time I wrote with it, I got ink on my fingers. It wasn't as much as this water here, which I guess might have been in the cap from the last time I cleaned it. I could have sworn I dried that out, though. Then here's some information from the Pilot Metropolitan. It comes in this nice metal case with a plastic window. And then here's some pens my grandma gave me. This one isn't a fountain pen. This is just a, a Mickey Mouse pen, but it's a, a cool thing for possibly collecting. I'm not sure how old it is. There's a dip pen, which a, a dip pen is basically like a quill only Anything from a quill to a metal pen that doesn't hold its own ink is a dip pen. They actually make glass dip pens, which are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've, I've never tried to use this. I've never tried to use any of these. These two are really cool, and I want to get them refurbished, but I don't know where to get them refurbished because I, I don't trust sending them off online. Again, 
most analog will turn if possible. So I really want to go to like a actual store and drop them off there, but I can't find any place that would repair these in person. Um, again, another fountain pen, but they're so small and they're really old pens, like 60s probably or 50s. Um, one of these, one of these I couldn't figure out how it was refilled and then the other one had a lever on it. Yeah, this one. Um, so the, the sack in this is probably all dried up and my grandma never um, apparently cleaned her pen. She told me like, you know, there's probably dried ink in there. So that means the whole thing's really screwed up and I don't dare try to fix it with my very small knowledge of pens at the moment. And then these are two pens my grandma got for when she had her, uh, her school. She like ran a school, which is pretty cool. And both of them say her name on it. If it focuses, there we go. This one's sort of pressed into a ballpoint pen. And then this is a really cool fountain pen. So you see Francis Godwin on there. I think this is a pop. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. However, uh, the first time I pulled this out, I believe it was a, a piston filler. I need to check that again. I'm too afraid to... Maybe I had to twist it. I'm not sure. Um, I'm too afraid to mess with it right now. But this thing like came out the front of it. And I don't know what that is. And I can't get it to go back down for the life of me. It, it like is a metal rod that comes straight out of the feed. And it won't go down anymore. And this can't go back in anymore without like making this so far out that I can't get the lid back on. So um, anyone who has pen information, please tell me who I can send these to to fix them for not you know, like $300, and, um, I would like it to be less than 100 but, uh, maybe one day if I become a millionaire, I'll send these into one of those online people who, you know, everything they do is $50 or something, but th those are the pens I have, and that was a random rant about the random old stuff I collect. I don't even know what I'm going to name this video, and I'm running super long, so I might as well just continue talking. I'm going to go show you my CDs now. See, since I never can come up with a video to really talk about this stuff, I might as well say, okay, this stuff is kind of hipster, so here it is. I, I buy CDs because I don't trust downloads, and then I download them onto iTunes if I want to listen to them on my phone. I have, I believe this is the punk rock side, or no, this is, this is punk rock. I just knocked over a can of Zippo lighter fluid. This is punk rock. This is metal. This is punk rock. And this is all Disciple albums. Let's try not... That's the uh, UNICEF CD that was in that other video. And then here's some more CDs that I couldn't fit on my shelf. Ambassadors of Shalom, which is a thumper punk thing. Um, oh, hit the camera again. Uh, off the tripod and I still hit the camera. Um, I can't think of the name. All I can think of is Finnish people because that's the only thing that's in my eyesight. Sleeping Giant, or, yeah, Sleeping Giant. Why did I, how could I forget that? Anyways, for today, you know, these brands, bands. Uh, I can't think right now. Here's another MXPX album. I'm going to go now before I screw another thing up. Actually, I want to show you these cans because I can't think of any other time I'll be able to show these cans. Um, we found these cans up at the lake house, and they're like from the 50s, because if you notice, the top is different, and they look so different, but that is really cool. Um, since I'm talking about, right, this is the only one that's dented up. These are like super good, and this might, actually, these two are both dented up. This one's like in perfect condition. This Pepsi Cola can. Anyways, um... While I'm talking about hipster stuff, I might as well just show you some VHS tapes I have in here. I don't have a DVD player in my room, but I have a VHS player. I have a bunch of video game consoles that play DVDs, though. Um, I really like cartoons and stuff, so these are some cartoons I used to watch. And Snow Dogs, that was a movie I used to watch with my grandma. Anyways, here's a stupid video I made while I was stick. I just found the case to that Fisher Space Pen, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.